Welcome to Manchester and to the 13th edition of the Morrison's Great Manchester Run, the UK's biggest 10K road race. Sees a host of top class distance runners in the elite field, not to mention another 34,000 taking part in the mass event. We get underway though with the elite wheelchair race. Well, the start line features both the men and women, and of course the men, David Weir, who of course was in the London Marathon just recently behind Josh George. Also features Simon Lawson, the defending great Manchester run champion. And of course for the women, Shelley Woods in that yellow hat just moving through the picture there, uh, representing the women. She's certainly the odds-on favourite there, Jade Jones, um, a great Britain also in the field. It looks as though Weir and Lawson have headed off uh, very, very quickly at the helm of this uh, group. As one would expect, this is a distance that uh, David Weir enjoys. And at uh, this stage, Lawson leading by Weir, but I think Weir is looking to come past him, isn't he, at this early stage? But they're already away from the rest of the field. And Shelley Woods is back in that uh, trailing group, as one would expect, the lead woman. Anyway, back to the start, and it's the women's 10-kilometre race, and uh, what a race this promises to be, and what a field we have here. Well, Gilana, we saw her win the Olympic title in uh, 2012 in London, uh, despite falling over, and great run second place last year, so we've seen a fair bit of her. Just waiting for the introduction. Well, Gemma Steele really is on song, 18th in the World Cross Country Championship. She was the highest place European, incidentally, uh, to finish those championships. And uh, sub 70 minute half marathon last season in very good form. And of course, the European Cross Country Champion last year. Oh, it's good to see the European 10,000 metre champion here, Joe Pavey. Always well received by the crowd here. The oldest woman, of course, uh, ever to win that a European title. She's 41 now. Well, Edna Kiplegat, of course, uh, didn't do quite so well in the London Marathon this year, but she was the winner in 2014. Great Scottish run champion last year as well. The Curry, well, she may feature as well that uh, tall figure from Burundi in the pink uh, strip on the left. Uh, Ten kilometres ahead of them. Now, let's see how competitive this race is going to be. Well, straight into the lead. Um, I can see right at the front there is... Looks like Betsy Siner of Kenya, a winner of the American Collegiate titles at cross country and on the track, indoors and out. So she's in good uh, form. I see Joe Pavia alongside her. You can see and Gemma Steele looking in third place there and also in the Kiplagat on the left of the head. Let's have a look at the start. It starts in uh, Portland Street, crosses Oxford Street, heads out towards one kilometer, and then City Road and then Chester Road. Bridgewater Way as they go from two to three. And then, of course, it's Old Trafford. They will go past Old Trafford between three and four. There's the four kilometre mark. And round, uh, round Village Circle, Warren Bruce Road. And then they'll turn to be greeted by the Imperial War Museum and Salford Keys there. And then the return is alongside the Manchester Ship Canal. At seven, they turn left again alongside the canal and then they head away from the canal heading back towards the finish in Deansgate at uh, 10 kilometers. It's a challenging course and it's quick. Well, look at this. Uh, looks to me as though uh, we've got two uh, women out in front and one of them is uh, Spetsy Siner, certainly, and it looks like uh, Carolyn Killell as well, silver medalist. It is Killell, silver medalist in the Commonwealth Games, of course, but uh, sixth in the recent Boston Marathon now. How much will that have taken out of those legs? I'm told it takes five or six weeks for the tiredness to start to go, and it's not been that long since uh, she ran that race. Siner on the near side. As I said, she's uh, been in the United States winning collegiate titles and winning them quite well. Gemma Steele locked in alongside Joe Pavey and Galani, uh, Galana of Ethiopia, the Olympic champion, Ethiopian marathon record holder. And uh, I just wonder how she will go. There it is, Steele and Pave. That's the leading group. They are well spread out, aren't they, in the early stages? And uh, the uh, first kilometre, not particularly quick, but uh, we will give you some idea of the pace as they go through. Uh, once we get alongside, um, I guess, a Manchester United Old Trafford. But just come back, there is uh, Old Trafford, and there is David Weir. 
Well, David Ware's absolutely flying. He's dropped the rest. And uh, Simon Lawson, nowhere in sight at the moment. As they come back down, of course, as is always the case on this uh, long course, they can see athletes coming in the other direction. A bit discouraging if you're going the wrong way, though. But Weir, such a super... Ah, Shelley Woods, too. Now, she is leading the ladies' race and leading it well, too. And Shelley, a great, great performer over the years in Paralympic sport in particular. And uh, six in the Boston Marathon. But nevertheless, this is class. Sambu, New York 10K champion last year, the world's best 10K third place this year. So he's on form and already been over the distance. Well, the former um, world 15, 5,000 metre champion, uh, Lagat, well known on the track as well as on the road. That was in 2007, he won those two titles, of course. Well, Wilson Kipsang, second of the London Marathon. How on earth he's got the strength to run this? Former world record holder, set it in Berlin a couple of years ago in the marathon. Absolutely superb. Couldn't quite do it in the London Marathon, got second place. Adjusting that watch. And now Leonard Coleman, look at that world record holder over three distances there. And one of them is the 10K. Whether he's in that sort of form at the moment, well, only time will tell. Well, a man twice Olympic, five-time world champion over 10,000 metres, five-time great Manchester run champion. He's not in that sort of form at the moment. Here's a man in the twilight of his career, Haile Gabrielassi. What a wonderful, wonderful athlete, one of the greatest, if not the greatest. Well, remember, well over 30,000, the masses that will follow, individual stopwatches will be clicked, and they often are uh, for club runners, and there'll be some in this race have never run it before, and you can see they're coming from two different uh, uh, files into a single file, and look how quickly they are spreading out. There's Greg Rutherford just uh, greeting one or two of the athletes there, having uh, won the long jump yesterday. And the women, look at this, there's a big lead, and it's the two athletes we saw earlier. It looks like, uh, it looks like Hillel, yes, Hillel on the left, and Sina on the right, and there it is. These two, I can tell you, they went through three kilometers in nine minutes and 21, and uh, we'll get a time, I hope, at uh, four kilometers. But they're running uh, right about three, 14, 15 per kilometer at the moment, and look at, uh, uh, Edna Kiplagat, way off the back of Gemma Steele, behind Edna Kiplagat, and then the rest behind. Too far back at the moment. This is a very, very quick start, and I just wonder, Carol Carolyn Kilel, whether she can actually stay with this. Remember, she was in Glasgow winning a silver medal in the Commonwealth Games Marathon. She is uh, a good athlete. But remember the Boston Marathon. It does take time to recover, and this requires speed. David Weir, David Weir, coming towards the end of this race. It's gone very much with the script. And this man, uh, one of the class acts in every respect in wheelchair sport, well known throughout the world, is going to be inside, or looks as though he has inside 21 minutes, just 20 minutes, 56, 57. Well, that's not official. We'll wait for the official time. But meanwhile, the men, Kipsang on the left, Komon on the right, Sambu, I've not seen much of Sambu, I have to admit, Lagat, who's got the sprint finish, he's there as well. And uh, Makoka is there as well, and so is Mihari of Ethiopia, just hidden behind uh, Sambu. That looks like uh, Mihari. And uh, Shelley Woods now coming to the tape to win the women's race. Well, Shelley, another win under her belt. Good performance by her. She's been pretty dominant in the race, just as David Weir was. So, Weir and Woods to the form book, win their respective races. Now Gemma Steele looks as though, well, she has just gone past Edna Kiplagat now. Now that must mean, well, at 17 minutes, they went through 5K at 15.43. The last two kilometers, 3.14 and 3.08, so the fifth kilometer was pretty quick and uh, they're heading towards the sixth kilometre here. A Gemma Steele has taken over from uh, Edna Kiplagat, but still, Kilel and Sina 
um, are up in the lead. I just wonder how long Sina will stay with uh, Kilel or Kilel with Sina. Uh, look, Sina's got away. That looks like the purple vest of Kilel now about 10, 12 meters behind and laboring just a little bit. And uh, well, Betsy Sina looks as though she's getting away. Still at Old, well, they're at Old Trafford. I was going to say, still in that same grouping. Um, I don't think anyone significant has uh, dropped away from that group. Coman has uh, got the lead. Remember, world record holder on the roads at 10k at 26:44. That is pretty quick, isn't it? Leonard Coman, who's fourth in the Great Ireland, Great Ireland 10k this year, and uh, one of Brussels, uh, one of 10k in Brussels as well. Sambu, as I said, I haven't seen too much for him, but very, very successful on the American circuit is Sambu, is coached by James Lee, who also trains with uh, Bernard Lagat, so they're training partners in the middle, and he's used some, I have to say, there's a good story about Sambu, because he's used some of his road race prize money to provide a water supply for everybody at his home village in Kenya, so that really is very generous indeed, and that's a story of so many of these Kenyan athletes, it is. Kip Sang looks comfortable, doesn't he? and uh, Mihari sitting in behind. But there's the women, and that uh, gap has uh, probably increased a little bit with uh, Betsy Sina uh, leading at the moment. She's had quite a few races already this season, incidentally, as uh, Sina. Uh, second in the indoor 3,000 metres in the Milrose uh, meet. She's been indoors, and then third in the Juan World's Best 10K, second in the New Orleans 8K. She's been around and done a lot of racing, and the She's really gone up very, very strongly indeed. Right from the start, she took the lead, dragging uh, Carolyn Killell behind her. But Killell may well be feeling the effects of the Boston uh, Marathon, that's for sure. No sign of Gilana of Ethiopia. But as we get back to the men, Sambu looks to me to be putting the pedal down here. And Makoka going with him. Uh, Stephen Makoka, twice Shanghai Marathon winner in 2014. He was the great Scottish half marathon winner as well. So we've seen him around. Lives in Pretoria, student of sports management at the University of Technology. And uh, he is uh, some athlete as well, Makoka. He's got a best of 28-12, incidentally. It was a couple of seasons ago now. There are one or two on paper quicker than him. But uh, this is a different race. It certainly is. But uh, Kipsang will need to stay with these leading two unless they've gone off a little bit too early. 18.55 uh, for the men. And uh, that is pretty quick, actually. Well, Betsy Sena looks to me to be full of confidence here in the final stages of this uh, race, most definitely beyond 8K now and uh, heading towards 9K. The last three kilometres, 309, 319, 311. And look at this, uh, Gemma Steele has just come past Edna Kiplagat. Now, what's happened to Carolyn Killell? who tried to stay with uh, Betsy Sina, and she's clearly paid the penalty and dropped away. Now, Steele has got a lot of distance to make up on uh, Betsy Sina, and I just wonder whether she's probably uh, left it a little bit late to put the real effort in, but we know that Gemma's got a good sprint finish, and look at that, it's only about, what, 40 metres or so, but uh, that uh, may be enough, but Sina's been on her own for pretty well the whole of this race. Once she went away with Killell, then went away on her own. And at 27.14, she is heading towards nine kilometers. And uh, the men uh, running away from Old Trafford. And uh, oh, look, there's a little bit of a gap, certainly. It looks like uh, Stephen Makoka, is it? Let's just get a close look. It looks like Makoka and Sambu, these two. Uh, it is Stephen Makoka in that orange strip, and all of a sudden, Wilson Kipsang has dropped off the back of uh, Bernard Legat. Now, Legat doesn't run this race very often. His best we've got at 29.40, so he doesn't run it very often. But uh, Sambu, very much on form. He's had some good races recently. Had a good race uh, recently with a, a UK best in the Boston 5K. He was second uh, in that race, but had a very good time. And so in very good form and looks full of running, doesn't he? Looking as though he wants to get away from Stephen Makoka, but whether he'll be able to do that, looking at them going the other way, that must be either encouraging or discouraging, whichever, as the masses, all 34,000 of them, run past in one direction and the leading woman runs in the other. A little glance over the shoulder, that could be telling. 
And Gemma Steele certainly now getting away from Edna Kiplagat, twice world champion, the London Marathon winner in 2014. And she's run 12 marathons, she knows about distance, but really faltered in the London Marathon just recently. And Gemma Steele may well um, challenge her first marathon because that may be where her real talent lies. She's not been able to transfer her talent from the country and on the roads to the track yet, but uh, this is another season, I wonder. Well, the chasing men, that's Andrew Bouchard there, incidentally, and Ross Millington. Uh, Bouchard on the right and Millington both in the yellowish vest. There they are, and McDonnell and Christian McLeod. And uh, that's a, the, the, the son of Mick McLeod in that uh, leading or in that uh, trailing group as well. And it's good to see uh, them, but they're way, way down on the leading men at the moment. And there is the evidence, certainly a well strung out. Makoka's still leading. Uh, he's come back from uh, Sambu. Sambu looked as though he was going to put the pedal down, didn't he? Look, as, as I say that, he now starts to go alongside. 21-27 uh, for the men. And, uh, and look at that, Legat's dropping away, and so is Kip. I'm not surprised, Kip Sang. I mean, when you run 2-4, remember he's a sub-2-4 man in the marathon. That was in Berlin a couple of seasons ago. But the London marathon took a lot out of him. It really did. And... Uh, well, and the women then, let's just uh, get back to that. But uh, the last part of the race in the final stage is now Sina leading in and chased home once again by Gemma Steele. And Gemma was making a little bit of an inroad into that deficit, but whether I think it's much too late to actually impose upon uh, the uh, Kenyan uh, Betsy Sina. Well, it is a good lead, but it's closing down and Gemma Steele, well, She's making a real effort to close that gap, but I think it's going to be too late. There's too much to do. Look at the look on her face. Sheer determination. She's got away from Edna Kiplagat, but I don't think she's going to make it to the lead. Closing stages then, Betsy Sina of Kenya heading towards the finish and with uh, a very, very fast finishing Gemma Steele chasing her so hard Look at this, she really is making an effort, but sina has got too big a lead and is going to take this title. It's a really strong finish. Sina's hung on to this, was fading a bit, but she'd done enough. She wins it, and in the end, wins it well. Gemma Steele coming in into second place, just ahead of Edna Kiplagat of Kenya. Well done, Gemma Steele. Good race, that. Sina went out in front very early on, dropped Killel, and then was on her own throughout, right the way through to the finish. Well, certainly in terms of the men's race, it's uh, Stephen Sambu and Stephen Makoka, uh, Kenya versus South Africa at this uh, stage of the race. And uh, there they are. And uh, Sambu has really tried to get away from Makoka. Remember Makoko? He's, he's a very useful marathon man too, twice a Shanghai marathon winner. And remember, he won the Great Scottish Half Marathon in 2014. We've seen him before. He is very, very quick indeed. He's got a best of 28-12 a couple of seasons ago. And just as I say that, Sambu may well be trying to move away. I can see Legat in uh, third place. And in fourth place uh, is Wilson Kitsang, who's really found the effort in the London Marathon a little bit too much to carry through to this uh, race. Um, the... Men really have been moving quite well. The sixth kilometre was 2.45, the seventh 2.49, the eighth 2.38 and the ninth 2.41, but back the 34,000 still starting off on their 10 kilometre journey. Watch them click those stopwatches. Greg Rutherford still there, his hand must be hurting by now. The Olympic long jump champion on duty there. And uh, this is now a real battle, and that gap has opened up, hasn't it? It must be, what, 10 metres, probably a little bit more than that, uh, with uh, Stephen Sambu now uh, moving away. His best, 27.25, incidentally, back in 2014, last season. So he is useful at this distance, that's for sure, and he's now proving it. The American collegiate man. Oh, look at this, and look at the way that the others are going in the other direction. And they're all shouting encouragement across to the leader. He's oblivious to it, deep in concentration, eyes down. 
And you're often asked, what do they think about? It's just about feeling. It's just about feeling good and getting on with the race. Tactically, well, he's been there or about, thereabouts in the lead right from the start. Makokas was with him for a while. Lagat was there. So was uh, Kipsang. And also Mihari, the Ethiopian, who dropped off some time ago. He was there in that leading group early on. But now it's come down to uh, how far Sambu can get away from Makoko. And uh, if this stays like this, well, uh, the race is going to go to the Kenyan quite comfortably. Just uh, getting the look at the masses going the other way. It's a lovely sight, isn't it? One of Europe's great 10-kilometer uh, races, this. And look at the crowd offering encouragement. Big, big crowd along this uh, course. And uh, Sambu, absolutely a class act on this race. He's away now, Makoko. He's gone way behind him now, must be 30 metres or more behind him now as they go towards the final stages of this uh, race. Ah, there's uh, Bernard Lagatch, done well actually, he's in third place, he's holding off Wilson Kipsang. Kipsang looks a very tired man and I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised he had to work very, very hard uh, to get his second place in the London Marathon and uh, the tiredness must still be in his legs. A little look over the shoulder. And Makoka, that's deceptive. He's back a little bit further than it looks from that shot, incidentally. And uh, Stephen Sambu now looks as though he's coming away with this. And it looks as though it's going to be pretty quick. I remember the uh, fastest time is uh, Mika Kogo's time, set here in 2007 at 27.21. And that's he's going to be pr very close to that, you know. He may well not beat it, but oh, you look at this, watch the clock, 27-21, he's just going to be outside of it, I think. And let's just check on this time. It's just outside the fastest time ever recorded here by Stephen Sambu. He hits the tape in what, about 27.30, and if that's confirmed, that's the third fastest time in Manchester. Makoko finishes in second place. Good run by him. He challenged hard, but couldn't quite keep uh, with uh, Stephen Sambu. And Bernard Legat, well, this is a good, good run by him. It's a personal best by him. And Wilson Kipsang, they're the two training partners, incidentally. That hits the hug. And Wilson Kipsang comes across with a big smile and says, well, I probably need a rest now. Well, there's the result, Stephen Sambu of Kenya, 27.30, and Makoko, 27.38, Lagat, 27.48, a personal best by a long way, just ahead of Wilson Kipsang of Kenya. I tried so hard because it was windy, especially coming this way, it was so windy. And then I tried to push, like, for the last, two, the last two miles, I pushed so hard to break those guys, because I was with everybody in, in, mile, in, in mile four, everybody was there, and then I started pushing so hard. And then I, I, I was tired because I break everybody. Yeah. And nice scenes with Bernard at the end. Yeah, I trained with Bernard. So when I saw him coming, and then because he was aiming, he was aiming uh, 28 uh, flat. So I needed 27, 57 around there. So I was so happy because he broke the, the world masters record. So I'm, I'm happy for him. He's my training partner. So you know, so I, I feel like we are doing, we are doing the right training. They certainly are, and the women went well too. Betsy Siner almost led from start to finish, 31.49. A very fast finishing Gemma Steele in second at 31.55, and then Edna Kiplagat just ahead of Caroline Killel of Kenya. Coming to Manchester is like a great thing for me. It's my first time here, so um, I just wanted to win the race today. That was my goal since I stayed here. I was like, this is a beautiful city, and I enjoy like the streets, so it was really fun to go out there and get a win today. Bring you up to date with the wheelchair result. David Weir from Simon Lawson from Nathan McGuire. As far as the women are concerned, Shelley Woods from Mel Nichols and Jade Jones. You know, it's the plan to come up here and and go out hard and, and race hard after disappointment of, of London, you know. I think it was just to get my anger out a little bit because I was a bit bit disappointed at the end. But that wasn't, you know, London was just one of the things that happened, my glove fell apart and I've done my best to, to stay with the pack and, and to try and sprint at the end, but, you know, just to come up here and, and race, you know, and keep racing, um, yeah, it's, it's done me good today. Well, after the 10K run, the great Haile Gabriselassie announced his retirement from international athletics, bringing the curtain down on a magnificent career that saw him crowned Olympic champion twice, world champion five times. 
Next up for us, though, is the doubleheader, the Great North City Games, and Morrison's Great North Run in September. Don't forget to keep up to date on our website, greatrun.org. But for now, from Manchester, goodbye.